we have seen that WPA PSK and WPA2 PSK, even though we can use the four way handshake that we captured and run a dictionary attack on it, it's not very satisfying, not in the same way that we were working with WEP and just needed to get enough different frames with different IVs. So the question then becomes, what else can we do besides this kind of dictionary attack? What if we don't have a suitable dictionary because the client has, I mean, the person who set the passphrase has chosen a passphrase that's just not in these word lists? What can we do? So we're going to take a look at some alternative approaches related to weaknesses in other parts of the chain, so to speak. We had looked at Cafe Latte for WEP, and that was for the case of isolated WEP clients. So this is a client that has previously connected to a WEP access point. And so they have the WEP key stored in them. And if you can get them, sort of induce them to start communicating with what they think is the access point, then you can start capturing frames. Now, what about in the case of WPA and WPA2? Can we do the same kind of things? Similarly, target an isolated client. When I mention weaknesses in the chain, so we're here focusing instead of on the access point itself, which is kind of like the hardest point to crack, let's take a look at isolated client. So it's a client in isolation from the access point. Going along these lines as well, we also want to target what is often the weakest link in the whole chain, because besides the access point and the client, you also have the human user. So if you can somehow get the human user to actually give you the passphrase, that's even better from the point of view of getting passphrase. Firstly, we'll take a look at isolated clients. So this is purely a technical challenge. And then we will start looking at also the human user, but not so much for this video. We will just introduce it at the end of the video. Let's take a look at isolated clients and the technical challenge of uh, trying to get the client to reveal certain information that you can then use to run your dictionary attacks on. So remember that with WEP clients, they can be attacked with Cafe Latte, Herty, and so on. The idea was to set up a fake access point claiming to be the access point in question. So perhaps you know that the ESS ID is something and then you just set up a fake access point with something like Airbase NG and claim to be that access point. Once you can then get the client to try to connect to this access point and to associate it with it, then after that you can induce the client to keep sending frames that are using this WAP key, and they're going to be having multiple IVs, which is what we want to capture. So for example, the classic way is to be sending out fake op requests and then getting the client to be sending op responses. So what about WPA and WPA PSK and WPA2 PSK? Can we do something similar? Is there something like Cafe Latte for WPA and WPA2? In fact, there is. We can similarly also set up a fake access point. And the idea here is that it's, in fact, even easier in some ways than for WEP because we don't have to induce the client to keep sending frames with different IVs. We just need to capture a four-way handshake. And in fact, we don't even need the whole four-way handshake. We just need two messages of it. Now, is this something that a fake access point is able to do, I mean, to provide it's part of the four-way handshake without knowing the passphrase. Let's take a look at the four-way handshake again. We see that it starts with this A nonce that's sent from the access point. Now look at this. We don't need to know the, the PMK. We just need to generate a random A nonce and send it. So clearly this is something that a fake access point can do without knowing the passphrase. Then the client, the isolated client in this case, will generate an S nonce. It will calculate a PTK using the A nonce and S nonce. And then it sends back the MIC, woohoo. So this is valuable information that now the attacker knows. The, the MIC associated with this A nonce, S nonce, 
and the pairwise master key. Now this step here to, to calculate the PTK, well, in a real access point it will do that, but the fake access point doesn't have to do that because it's not needed in the following message. Of course, it's not going to send the PTK, so it just needs to send back the MIC, ANONs, and some other keys. Perhaps this can be fake information. Doesn't really matter. In fact, we don't even need to complete a four-way handshake because with these first two messages, we already have the ANONs, SNONs, and MIC. So the fake access point has the information that it needs, and we can then run a dictionary attack as we saw before using different past phrases. You might have heard of the term honeypot, where in this case, when we talk about Wi-Fi honeypots, we're talking about something that attracts something to do a certain behavior. So just like honeypots would attract bees to come to get the honey. So in this case, for Wi-Fi honeypots, it's something like this fake access point that attracts the clients to associate and then perhaps to be sending frames like up responses. Sometimes if we don't know what kind of authentication is being used, we can set up multiple honeypots, let's say four different honeypots with open WEP, WPA PSK, and WPA2 PSK for the same given as ESSID, because maybe what we know is the ESSID. We set up these four and then see which one the client gets attracted to. We have seen how Airbase NG can help with a bare bones honeypot, but it's limited in the sense that just with Airbase NG by itself, that we don't have DNS, we don't have internet connectivity and so on, so the client is not really getting a good deal here. We are not acting like a full featured access point. In fact, we can set up full featured access points that are more like rogue access points with DNS, routing, internet connectivity and so on. Generally, you might want to do this in conjunction with some additional step, which is, for example, to get a passphrase from the user. Now, they have what they think is you know, normal connectivity. And you can do some social engineering, for example, instead of, of just quietly capturing the four-way handshake and then trying to guess the passphrase in the usual way, perhaps put some kind of pop-up that would induce the human user to enter the passphrase. 